Stakes are high in esports. From individual plays to investing in entire leagues, everything's a gamble. Guess right and you'll make it rain. But if you fail, well, let's just say esports has seen its fair share of expensive fails. This week on Listed, we are going to talk about the most expensive mistakes in esports history, from failed leagues to dropped combos. But first, I've got to let you know that we're co-streaming EVO live this weekend at twitch.tv slash thescoreesports, and I'm flying to Canada to meet the guys for the first time, so be there for me, like moral support. Anyways, here's the list. Starting us off today has to be what is Valorant's most expensive, unfortunate series of events, T1's Valorant team. T1 had a rough time in VCT 2021, never quite qualifying for a Masters event despite their all-star and presumably expensive roster. But there were big expectations for the team going into 2022. They completely overhauled their roster and signed Steel as their IGL. But at the qualifiers for Challengers 1, T1 imploded on the spot. After losing to Rise in the upper bracket, they faced off against TSM where T1's coach typed help sewer into the team's chat, breaking the tournament's rules, leading to an unceremonious and thoroughly memed on forfeit. I'm here to help sewer. Hello? Is this sewer? In Street Fighter, all it takes is a split second miss input to drop a combo and watch your entire tournament life flash before your eyes. And with $150,000 on the line in the grand final of the E-League Invitational 2017, Phenom probably had it worse than most with what is probably the most expensive dropped combo of all time. Phenom give away the tournament here. Oh, oh my he finds God! The hit. Crouch strong, activates no, it, and he dropped the TV. He missed the combo, and that could be the tournament point. Puck goes on your invitational champion over Phenom. What a set! Puck comes back from losers. If Phenom didn't drop that DP, we would have gone to Game Six. Instead, Punk walked away with the $150,000 grand prize, and Phenom went home with 40k. That is a $110,000 misinput. Yikes. Hey, remember when 100 Thieves tried to get into the CSGO scene? Twice. In 2017, 100 Thieves bought out Immortal's Brazilian roster. But only after a month and a half of signing them, 100 Thieves released the entire roster without ever playing a match, citing visa issues and roster complications. Most of these complications centered around KNG, who made death threats against other players back on Immortals. And after being signed by 100 Thieves, made some homophobic comments on Twitter. But have no fear, because in 2019, 100 Thieves tried to re-enter CSGO. We are entering Counter-Strike, and we are doing it in style, let's say. We're doing it with the team that we wanted. We have agreed to a transfer for the now former Renegades roster. This time, they acquired a Renegades roster, and the new 100 Thieves CSGO team did well for the rest of 2019, making it to the grand final of IEM Beijing. This is almost never seen before. It's 27 and four right now. In a one versus three here with 40 seconds left, and JKS turning around, and there it is. He's gonna bring down the destruction right on top of Vitality, a 16 to two scoreline at the end, and they're in the grand finals here in Beijing. But that's as far as they ever got. Between dismal results and a global pandemic in 2020, 100 Thieves collapsed and the org pulled out of CSGO again. 100 Thieves probably aren't coming back to CSGO anytime soon considering how expensive rosters have gotten, but you gotta give them credit for trying again after how terribly the first time went. Unfortunately, 100 Thieves is exiting CSGO. I think the most glaring issue that our organization has faced has been COVID. 2020, was definitely not the year that any of us anticipated. H1Z1 was a battle royale that seemed destined to be overshadowed by games like PUBG and Fortnite. So when the game came out of early access in 2018, it had a big plan to stay relevant. Their drastic move was to make a H1Z1 Pro League with millions of dollars paid out across two splits for participating orgs, player salaries, whatever, to make it a huge deal. They hired content creators and streamers to promote their league, yet the first split fell flat and they failed to gain meaningful viewership. It failed so badly that the second split was canceled after orgs reported that the league failed to pay them, basically killing the league. Remember, you can't make something popular just by throwing money at the problem, especially when you run out of money. 
few CSGO disasters hurt more than the fall of FaZe's super team. In case you don't remember, in 2017, FaZe literally assembled the infinity gauntlet of the best CSGO players in the universe on their roster. By buying G2's 2017 roster for $700,000 and eventually switching out everyone but Rain for Kerrigan, Nico, Guardian, and Olaf Meister, this team probably cost FaZe an arm and a leg. And for a while, FaZe's super team decimated the competition. Astralis are running out players, options, and time. It exists, and Guardian to do it. It's FaZe Clan. He's got to pinch it in. They've got oh, to get their it. Chrome, and he's, he's out of ammo. Pull. He's out of ammo. They know it until they get on the defuse. He's just barely done it as he, oh my god, it's so close. FaZe get away with it. But FaZe's individual stars just couldn't gel as a team. They'd either outfrag and dominate or underperform and throw games against teams way worse than them, culminating in the most painful loss in esports history, the Boston Major Grand Finals. Guardian waits patiently as Cloud9 sets the push up. Oh! Oh, this happens! They made it work! Cloud9 are your E League Major Champions! It's true what they say. Teamwork actually does make the dream work. Who can forget esports' biggest blow up, the Overwatch League? Back in 2016, when it was launched, everyone thought it was literally the future of esports. Blizzard was going to revolutionize the esports scene. What's only Libero left? Hold strong, that is it. Libero, last man standing. OT ticking away, and that is it. London Spitfire will be your Overwatch League Stage 1 champions. The OWL had everything. The game was hype and the orgs were willing to pay a reported $2 million for a spot on the Overwatch League hype train. Blizz was making it rain. We do, we see it as a great opportunity. And, and what I like about it more than anything is that it's a way to connect globally. But the hype did not last. After a decent first season, the OWL was rocked by problems from all directions. Between bad metas and balancing issues, Blizzard's internal scandals, leaving Twitch for YouTube, and the release of Valorant, the OWL just couldn't compete. Blizzard tried to salvage things by announcing Overwatch 2, but they only managed to kill any hype that remained. Hey guys, who was excited for Overwatch 2? No one can hide online. Overwatch 2 is finally coming out soon though, so who knows? Maybe the OWL is set for a comeback. For our last entry, we have the tragic story of Mixer. Mixer was bought by Microsoft in 2018, who was looking to make a streaming platform to rival Twitch. So they pumped in cash to make new features, but also paid fat checks to streamers like Shroud and Ninja to stream exclusively on the platform that was originally home to small community-based streamers. As of today, I will be streaming exclusively on Mixer. I know, I know, it's exciting. Microsoft gambled that these big streamers be able to bring their huge followings to Mixer. When that didn't happen, Microsoft decided to pull the plug and shut it all down without warning. And sure, this whole mess probably cost Microsoft a lot of money. The real damage was to Mixer's original small streamers who were left out in the cold with nothing and were forced to start all over on other platforms. They clearly don't respect any partners because we had no idea about this. Not one clue. You would think, you would honestly think they would be telling us before they tell the world so that we have time to prepare as a brand. And that's it for this week's Listed. Did we miss an expensive fail? Let us know down in the comment section below. Take care and I'll see you over at twitch.tv slash Discord Esports. Uppercut. Sorry, Benkai walked out of costume. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a giant inflatable dinosaur costume. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just like looked to my left and I was like, what is on my screen? <laughs> oh man.